I'm gonna help I am. Today what I'm doing a story time BPD diagnosis story video. I'm actually amazed that I haven't like done this story before. Like, I really don't know how I haven't done this before. I filmed a video the day I got diagnosed with BPD. Um, I'll link that in the description down below. But I will also play a quick clip for you now. Following an overdose with medication in May, it was believed at her assessment the hospital gave a CMHD, which is community mental health team, involvement was needed. In terms of diagnosis and possible merging presentation of borderline personality disorder, I saw her within the CMHD on Wednesday the 29th of June within the assessment clinic. Lydia has been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. History of current self-harm. So what that video basically showed was me getting a diagnosis that I didn't really know much about because before I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder slash emotionally unstable personality disorder I didn't know anything about it at all. I didn't know what it was or anything to do with it. I knew absolutely nothing about it. I've now been diagnosed with BPD for three years. Really? Oh yes. We got some cola. As you saw me make in the intro clip, my story slash journey of being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder slash to where I am now. This video was very highly requested. It won the thing on the poll I did on my community tab. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hit the little notification bell. You'll be notified whenever I post on my community tab or you can just check it every day because I post polls all the time. I share little sneak previews of videos and vlogs. I'll let you choose the next video. I do Q&A announcements and all that jazz. I also post a lot on my Twitter. Don't follow me on Twitter. I'd very highly recommend it as you see me getting very political and you hear a lot about my life. I talk a lot on Twitter. Believe me, it's like my my child. So I was diagnosed with BPD after my third suicide attempt. Back then I lived in my hometown and life was hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into my story if you are interested. There's loads of videos on my channel and I'll link the playlist in the description and that'll explain all of that. Long story short, my life until I moved out at 18 wasn't amazing. When I, when I was 18 I moved up to Preston and now I live in London and I do this. I'm a film student, which is why I've got textbooks there. A lot of what I have shared in the past has been about, yeah, I got diagnosed after my third suicide attempt. So what actually happened in that time frame? So that last overdose that I made before the diagnosis, I was only diagnosed with a few things. I was diagnosed with bipolar, I was diagnosed with anxiety, and I was diagnosed with ADHD. They were the only diagnoses I had. Um, I was also under eating disorder services, but at that point I was seen as in recovery, whatever that's supposed to mean. So I was initially diagnosed as bipolar. A diagnosis which has since been changed and removed. It's no longer no longer diagnosed as a bipolar, so that's a thing. I mean, I'm not gonna. When I went into a &E that morning because of the overdose, did you wanna die and would you do it again? I said, I don't wanna die, I just want everything to stop. I want the stress to stop, I want all that to stop and would I do it again? Yes. I was given an emergency referral to the community mental health team because I, would, I had just turned 18. So this was after I'd been on the cams for around a year. I was under no adult services. The only adult input I'd had was from eating disorder services and obviously they don't cover personality disorders nor do they try and diagnose it. So I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder during this first assessment which I had with a consultant and a nurse. The appointment was about 45 minutes long. I'd had assessments before, they had read my history. Have you ever heard of a condition called borderline personality disorder? And I said no because I hadn't I didn't know anything about it. I was I was never raised into like a family that was very open about mental health. I didn't know much about it. And then I discovered YouTube and I followed a lot of YouTubers who talk about mental health and I still do. Mental health YouTubers are the main YouTubers I watch. Went home and I Googled it. What else would I do? What else would I do? No one really told it told me briefly what it was. Then I read it. I read the diagnostic criteria after being diagnosed. This was after I had it on paper like in front of me. I've never been one to self-diagnose because that shit's fucked up. You know, self-diagnose irritate me. Like, you don't have a condition unless you've been diagnosed with it. I think that's just that. I'm not gonna get into a huge debate over that. If you want me to make a video talking about self-diagnosing, let me know in the comments down below and I'll very happily do it. So when I got diagnosed, the first thing I did was I went home and Googled it because I wanted to know more. I needed to know what this condition was. And the first few things I read, um, there's a lot of stigma surrounding BPD. Back when I was diagnosed, there wasn't many videos online about it. So I picked up my camera and I filmed this diagnosis story and I vlogged and talked about my life since that point 
pretty openly how much life has life has changed for me and I think getting the diagnosis was the key part in recovery though it was never like explained to me properly by a professional until my first admission in Preston which was in 2017 uh, that admission in itself I was a voluntary patient in a psychiatric unit and they sat down and explained the diagnosis to me as well um, I think the biggest shock was like okay yeah there's no medication you can take to directly cure it however there are all these medications you can try and go for it like currently I'm on medication I have to be otherwise I don't sleep I dissociate and I do struggle my mood changes very rapidly and there's one big key difference between BPD and bipolar because on paper BPD and bipolar look exactly the same as in mood fluctuations but they're completely different like with bipolar it's usually a longer period of time BPD it's instantly like I could switch from one emotion to another to another to another to another in the same hour emotions to me are rapid cycling and changing constantly another big thing for me is impulsivity and low mood suicidal thoughts self-harm I'd self-harmed at that point pretty much every day since well, at the point of diagnosis I'd self-harmed every day since the start of secondary school and before that but I've done it every day since the start of secondary school to around a year and a half ago which is a lot to say but that's a long time since then I've done a lot of research on BPD I know a lot about it and like I said when I was first diagnosed the stigma of it scared me I was so afraid of it I was like does this mean that I've got something does this mean I've got something wrong with me does it mean I've got a defect with my personality does it mean I'm like fucked in the head or something and it doesn't like I think anyone who thinks that they get that take a chill <laughs> like weird people's experiences don't listen to all these mental health advocates that are like BPD can be cured or BPD is the enemy you don't get help because you have BPD because well yes there's a lot of issues getting help when you have BPD it's not impossible BPD often comes alongside other diagnosis it stems from it, BPD usually stems from childhood abuse slash trauma and usually that is the key trigger into it myself I'm alongside BPD I'm also diagnosed with complex PTSD which is often a diagnosis that gets confused with BPD and it's different to standardized standardized PTSD and I've got a whole video explaining that but they're two disorders that are very similar and they often co-occur not everybody you can have BPD without PTSD and often people with BPD don't actually have PTSD um, because you're able to let go of the traumatic event but you hold on to the memories of it and what that means is you're unable to move past it you hold on to it but you're holding a grudge against it so it's not like you're having flashbacks it's you're holding a grudge against it which is completely different to PTSD PTSD is flashbacks it is memories it's intrusive dreams it's hallucinations it's all of that with BPD itself I don't really know what symptoms I have with that because I'm diagnosed with other mental health conditions I'm currently diagnosed with depersonalization derealization depression, anxiety, body dysmorphic disorder, borderline personality disorder, there's a few others as well. Obviously ADHD still, that's still a thing. Obviously it doesn't impact me anymore. I do struggle a lot. I'm currently diagnosed with EDNOS, which is eating disorder not otherwise specified. I was previously diagnosed with anorexia. But when it comes down to how it has impacted me, I've had a lot of struggle getting help in crisis because I was at a point early this year where I was constantly in crisis. I had people around me being like, you can't always be in crisis. There's no way you can feel like that. And unfortunately it's very common for people with BPD to be in permanent crisis, hard to deal with and I wrote a little bit about this in my book and I'm not here to like just sell you my book and whatever but I wrote a book early this year about my entire experiences this year and it's a very raw representation of what living with BPD is like especially when you're having a lack of support from the system. I've had crisis teams hang up the phone on me, I have been inpatient three times properly um, and my BPD has been very out of control this year, it's now back in control and manage. I'm very happy to say that I haven't had like a BPD episode in a good few months and I'm very very happy with that. I don't miss the chaos and my meds keep me stable. All I would say is if you know someone with BPD or if you're getting diagnosed with BPD or you want to know more about BPD, research it. Don't read all the factual stuff. It's terrifying and horrible read personal experiences it sounds bad but people who have been through it know it better than the professionals do and i'm going to be making a whole little mini series talking about borderline personality disorder and everything like that because it's something you guys apparently want to see and if you want to see it i'm happy to make all i want to say is if you get diagnosed with bpd there is a hundred percent hope that you can get stability back. It usually doesn't occur until you're in your teenage years, it doesn't occur during childhood normally, it's very rare to have a child diagnosed with BPD. Usually it's late teens slash adulthood you get diagnosed with it. <laughs> 
which is why a lot of the time I get people commenting on me like, oh, but you're too young to have that diagnosis because in the state, in some parts of the state, you can't be diagnosed with BPD until you're 21. I'm 21 now. I live in the UK. It's a diagnosable disorder from the age of 18, though it can be diagnosed younger. Overall, I found that I found it very hard to get support on the NHS. Honest advice would be to um, focus on, um, don't rely on other people. Don't. I think medication's gonna change your life. Medication won't. It will help. It will make things easier. It won't magically cure it. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. It can cure. You can you can help depression with. You can help anxiety with medication, you can help insomnia with, with medication. Like, medication helps a lot, but it's not gonna change your life. Um, am I happy to be on medication? Not really. Do I need it? Yes. Am I going to take it? Of course I am. At the end of the day, would I rather be suicidal in the hospital or would I rather take a few tablets a day and be okay in the community doing what I love doing, which is making videos and having an amazing time in my life? Like, I live in London now. Five months ago, I was in a psychiatric unit. Basically, about ready to die. I didn't want to be alive. I had no intention on living to my birthday and I did. My birthday was yesterday and I'm 21. I made it through the year and I just want people to know that it is possible to have stability with BPD. In the second edition of my book, which is coming out at the end of the year, I've got an entire chapter wrote on BPD and stability and how you can achieve it and it's got loads of self-help stuff to do with BPD and it would mean the world if you could. Couldn't get and get maybe there's a sale on the Kindle edition of my book at the moment so if you want to read it you can go get it for a pound rather than two pound which is my gift to you. And like I say my book is something that it's not perfect like I'm not a fucking English person at all. No. Not me. I make videos, I'm a film student, I worked very hard on the book and yes the spelling and grammar might be trash and um, it's my life, my story and I wrote it to share with you. It is raw, it's from my perspective and it's about what happened this year. I also wanted to say that if you are someone with BPD who is struggling there are plenty of people out that you can talk to. If you're in crisis and the NHS aren't offering much support there is loads of helplines out there and I will leave a link to some in the description down below as it is for other countries I really don't know. If anyone in other countries knows of any helplines or a helpline that has helped them, if you have BPD leave them in the comments down below. The big issue with the BPD diagnosis is the stigma. I think the stigma surrounding BPD is fucking beyond a joke. And like I said, BPD often co-occurs with other, other disorders, mainly depression and anxiety, complex PTSD. It's actually very rare to have a diagnosis of just PTSD and BPD um, because PTSD and complex PTSD are two completely different things and like I said I've, got, I've made a video about this before. I think that's all I've got to say for you guys. If you have any questions or any videos relating to BPD you'd like me to make leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you hit the thumb, thumbs up button if you're new here. Punch the subscribe button in the face and flick that little notification bell while you're there. That was the fastest outro I've ever done in my life. Holy fuck. I hope everyone's having a good time at the moment. Like, I know Christmas can be a bit of an intense time for people and I've got some videos coming out soon about Christmas and the festive season and mental health and all the fun subjects. Like I said, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. If you have any video requests, questions or things you would like to add to this conversation we have going on here on my channel, leave it in the comments down below. Follow me on my social medias and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be tomorrow. I post every single day, especially this month. I'm doing a video every day in December. Wish me luck. <laughs> I wish this was vodka. Hawaiian, but it's not. It's just cola. Life's amazing. And peace, guys.